Today, we're building the strongest possible Hashira lineup in Demon Slayer. We're going to choose the absolute best candidates for all the primary branches of Sun Breathing. We're also going to consider a few demons, because if things hadn't gone the way they did, they may very well have been the good guys. By the time we're done building this lineup, you'll have the strongest possible Hashira in Demon Slayer history. And I promise you, whatever you do, you won't be able to guess all nine of the characters that are going to make up the team. Stick with me till the end, because we've got some completely unexpected ones. And as for how strong this lineup is going to be, I'd say forget about Muzan and his upper moons, because these guys are going to make them all look like a joke. I mean, of course, there's Yorichi. As an ancestor of breathing styles and the master of sun breathing, he's by far the strongest character in the story. Frankly, Yorichi himself can clean Muzan and his upper moons all by himself. But this isn't just a matter of strength. After all, Yorichi failed to finish off Muzan. This is why what we need is a lineup that'll make sure that the Hashira had the upper hand. Have you ever noticed an interesting parallel between Yorichi and the sun? Just like the sun, Muzan continued to avoid Yorichi's image for hundreds of years. But what if we both had the sun and the moon on our side? Exactly. We're going to recruit Michikatsu from back before he makes a deal with the devil and goes over to the dark side. This would mean that the Hashira would have both a sun breather and a moon breather. The sibling duo fans would truly love to see. Michikatsu may not have ever become strong enough to defeat Yorichi or Muzan, but he could have gone on to be much stronger than he would have ever imagined had he fully dedicated himself to the path of the Demon Slayer. He would become the moon to Yorichi's sun breathing. A perfect duo! perfectly complementing each other with no blind spots. All right, the brothers go without saying, but what about the other breathing styles? Who do you think is the most suited for the water Hashira position in the lineup? Urokodaki, Sabito, maybe Tanjiro? Nah, it's still Giyu after all. I don't care if he has imposter syndrome or whatever, but Giyu is basically made for water breathing. Everything from his personality to the way he fights, now he gets all riled up, it's all just like water. So calm and unbothered on the surface, but yet he hides so much vastness and despair in his heart. No wonder Tanjiro said he wasn't built for water breathing. Unless you're like water itself, you're not mastering the style. Even though Akaza had fought and defeated plenty of water Hashira in the past, he was still impressed by Giyu's mastery of this breathing style. Giyu stood out to him, and he also mentioned that it's been around 50 years since he last ran into someone this good. He definitely deserves the spot of the water Hashira in our lineup, even though he may personally disagree with this decision. Classic Giyu. By the way, there was another Hashira who managed to hold his own against Akaza. He was also constantly praised by him. And what makes it even more impressive is how the Hashira in question hadn't even developed his Demon Slayer mark yet. We are, of course, talking about Kyojuro Rengoku. Yep. He shall be the flame Hashira of our lineup. There's really no one else for the role. Just like how we hypothesize what could have been had Michikatsu not gone over to the dark side, we're also going to speculate what could have become of Rengoku if he didn't die in the Mugen train arc. He was already strong enough to hold his own against Akaza. Now imagine if he had a Demon Slayer mark and a red blade. Maybe even see-through world. I know that's a lot to ask, because not even Giyu had see-through world. But we're creating the strongest Hashira lineup here. And to defeat the purpose of each Hashira isn't at the very top of their potential. So far, so good. All of the picks up till this point make sense. But who do you think should take the role of the Thunder Hashira? Well, who else? It's gotta be Zenitsu. Yeah, he was never a Hashira unlike his mentor. But Zenitsu has feats that can only be attributed to a Hashira. Just like Giyu, he created an original form of his breathing style. And just like Muichiro, he defeated an upper rank demon all by himself. There's no competition. Zenitsu outclassed Kaigaku despite not being a demon. And let's not forget that he could only use the first form of thunder breathing until he went ahead and casually created a new one just for himself. All right, so far we have Yorichi, Michikatsu, Giyu, Rengoku, and Zenitsu. We only have four spots left. The next one is the stone pillar. Guillaume is the only known user of stone breathing, but he's also the strongest Hashira of the current generation. Capabilities aside, he was always the dependable rock of the group. Whenever Guillaume arrived to battles, his Hashira comrades, mighty as they may be, turn into little kids, happy and relieved that their senpai is there. 
There's no denying his strength. He gained access to the see-through world despite being a blind man, and that is in addition to the Demon Slayer Mark and Red Blade. This is big, because unlike Michikatsu, Gyu, Rengoku, and Zenitsu, Giyome has already reached the pinnacle of his potential. Again, he did all of that as a blind man. If Yorichi is going to be the leader of this lineup, Giyome can be considered the big brother of the team. Yes, the group is already strong enough as is, but this one is going to take things to the next level. Next, we have Akaza, the Destruction Hashira. I thought that maybe we should give him fist breathing or even fireworks breathing, but considering his blood demon art, destruction breathing is by far the best choice for him if he is to be a demon slayer. You can consider it a branch of thunder breathing that focuses exclusively on generating potent shock waves. Of course, instead of using swords, Akaza would fight with his hands, but we're going with prosthetic hands that are made of the same material as the Nichiren blades. This will allow Akaza to use the Soryu style and cause destruction with his hands. And in his prime, when he has Demon Slayer Mark, Red Hands, and See-Through World, he can easily become the strongest Hashira when it comes to pure raw strength. Of course, other Hashira will still have an edge when it comes to other aspects. Moving on, I chose Sanami. Similar to Rengoku, I thought long and hard, but I just don't think there's anyone who can better fulfill the Wind Hashira other than him. Now, unlike Giyome, he didn't awaken the See-Through World, but this man is just pure adrenaline. He was able to somehow keep up with Kokushibo. In fact, he did so well that Kokushibo somehow ended up remembering the first ever Wind Hashira from the Sengoku era. Keep in mind that this man, Kokushibo, couldn't remember the faces of his own wife or children, but he somehow remembered the first Wind Hashira. Just goes to show how contagious Sanami can sometimes be, huh? I'd say Sanami and Rengoku can represent the zeal of the Hashira. Now, finally, we have the last spot to fill in our Hashira lineup. Overall, I wanted to call Akaza the odd one out of the group, but he has nothing on the last Hashira of our lineup. Come on guys, I know you can guess this one. It's Tamayo, the Blood Hashira. Wait, what? Why Tamayo? Why not Kyutaro or Obanai? Or even Shinobu? In fact, when you think about it, Tanjiro is still not in this lineup. So what's going on? Well, hear me out. The intention behind this lineup is to create the strongest possible Hashira squad. It's not just about grouping a bunch of strong fighters together and calling it a day. We have to consider how the group will work together. That's why we didn't choose Doma. He's mental. And that's also why we didn't choose Hantengu. He's a coward. Akaza being a demon slayer makes sense because he was always a good guy even when he died as a demon. Michikatsu is a little complicated, but he was a Hashira at one point. All he needed to do was make peace with it and dedicate himself fully to the path of a demon slayer. Of course, we could have chosen Gyutaro as the Blood Hashira. He's definitely stronger than Tamayo, but this one is not about physical strength or battle prowess. This one is more about scheming behind the scenes. In fact, let's make it more interesting by keeping Tamayo as a demon. Yeah, that's right. She gets appointed as the Blood Hashira after centuries of living alone and doing her own thing as a demon. As for why we've chosen blood breathing as her style, it's very simple. Akaza's blood demon art was destructive death, and we created destruction breathing for him. Tamayo's blood demon art is blood bewitchment. It revolves around her using her own blood to cast spells. She also has unparalleled knowledge when it comes to the science and the physiology of demons. Considering this, there's no breathing style more appropriate than blood breathing. And as for which breathing style it is derived from, let's go with water breathing as that's the obvious choice. Ultimately, Tamayo will play the same kind of role as she did during the final role, but as an official Hashira. That's it, Muzan and his upper moons are cooked. 